Hey, welcome back to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces again. This video is a continuation of our series on culture and community and how those things relate to art. In last week's lesson, we talked about interactive murals, which are a fun way to get people in a certain city or location or town to just enjoy having some fun with local artwork. Today, we're going to talk about propaganda. You might be wondering, what's propaganda? What does that word mean? Well, here's an example of World War II propaganda. Notice that this picture comes from the government and it's trying to convince you to do something. What do you think this picture is trying to convince you to do? Well, this was designed specifically to try to convince young men to join the military to fight in World War II. And why did the government need to make posters like this? Because at that time there weren't enough people in the army and in the navy and there wasn't, you know, there weren't enough people in the military to fight the war, but fighting wasn't the only thing that the military needed. There were also propaganda posters related to farming and nursing and all sorts of other things that citizens could do to help support the war effort. Now, sometimes the word propaganda gets a bad reputation. It, it, it's used as a negative term to describe when a government is trying to convince its citizens to do things that they don't really want to do. In the case of this World War II propaganda, it's really patriotic things that were actually good things to do to help the country and to help the war effort and to help make sure that we got rid of the evil genocidal maniacs that were killing lots of people in other countries. But what if the government was using propaganda to try to convince you to do something that wasn't good or something that you shouldn't do? Well, that has happened in countries all over the world, but that's really not what the scope of this video is about. This video is going to focus on the positive uses of propaganda and how it can really bring a country together behind a common goal. So if I'm going to be making my own propaganda style poster picture things, first thing, step number one, is going to be I have to decide what my theme will be. What am I going to be trying to convince people to do? I could think about current events and try to convince people to wear a mask. I could think about community problems like litter and try to convince people to throw their trash away. I could think about nature and try to convince people to take care of their environment. Or I could try to get my country inspired to go to another planet. The ideas are endless. My personal favorite is that last one. I'm thinking my theme should be Mars or bust. That sounds good. So does that mean that I should write Mars or bust and then call it done? Oh, oh, maybe I guess there should be a picture of Mars, which is red. So color it red and then I'm done, right? That's all I need to do, right? Because that, that there, I mean, am I, am I, I'm done, right? Mr. New, I'm done. What do I do now? I've still got 30 minutes of art class time left. What do I... No, you're not. No. Here's what we need. Step number one was the theme. I'm done with step number one. I'm not done with step number two. Step number two is we want our theme to be easily readable in big, bold letters. If we took a step back and looked at this poster here from a distance, would you be able to see that? No, when I look at this from a distance, those tiny little letters become impossible to see. You can't read it anymore. We need thick, bold letters. So, step number two is gonna be box or bubble letters. Those are gonna make it stand out. They need to be 
huge. They need to be big, bold, and beautiful. We'll talk about that. After you've got your theme or your motto in really big, bold, beautiful letters, step number three is going to be compelling images. Compelling images, not just images. Right here, I've got a really uncompelling image. Compelling, that means that it actually draws attention and gets somebody interested in doing something. This doesn't do that, okay? So those are our three steps. Number one is a theme. Number two, we want to display that theme in big box letters, bold, beautiful letters. And then number three, we want compelling images with that. So let's put all that together. You might be thinking, I don't know how to make box letters or bubble letters. And if that's the case, I have several videos explaining how to make box letters or bubble letters, but there's a simple, a very simple trick. If you already know how to make box letters, just make box letters. If you don't already know how to make box letters, here's the trick. You can take any letters that you've written normally and turn each line into a box. Here's what I mean. The letter M has four lines, so it's going to end up having four boxes. There's this diagonal line. Let's make the end of the box, follow along the edge, and then close the other end of the box. Now it's got one box and three lines. I need to make each of those other three lines into a box the same way. Make the end of the box, follow along the line, and then close the end of the box. Now if you have two boxes that connect, you could erase that line between them or you could leave it. It's totally up to you. Again, I have a line here. Let's make the end of a box, go straight along the edge, following the direction of the line, and then connect the other ends together. And again, if you want to, you can erase this line here. It's up to you. Okay, again, I have another line. I'll turn it into a box by making the end of the box, following along the line, and then closing off the other end of the box. And again, I could erase those three lines in the middle of my letter if I wanted to, but I've got a box letter M. If you don't know how to make box letters, this trick works for any letter, any number, any symbol, capital letters, lowercase letters, it doesn't matter, anything in the alphabet, any, any numeral, any digits, any symbols at all, period. End of story. What about curved letters, like the letter A? Well, any letter that's a circle, right, that circle is one line, so that circle is going to be one box. In case of the letter A, it also has a second line that goes down. So this circle part is going to turn into a curved box. It looks like a donut. And then this line is going to turn into more of a rectangly box. I've got a box letter A. It's important to note that that letter A has a hole in the middle, just like a donut has a hole in the middle. If you're coloring the letter or if you're putting icing on the donut, does the icing fill the hole in the middle of the donut? No. So the hole would be showing what's behind, what's in the background. All right, the letter R has the vertical line and then it has the curved line. The letter S is just one line that curves in two different directions. So let's make the end of the box and then let's follow the curve and then let's make the other end of the box. So you can make box letters even if, if you've never made them before, this is, a, this is an easy way to do them. Now, I mentioned big, bold, and beautiful. As an offshoot of this right here, I'm going to talk about the three Bs. Big. Are these letters big? Mm, could I make them bigger? Yes. What if I made my M this big? Which one of those letters is going to be easier to see from a distance? Pretend this is a poster hanging up on a wall uh, at a store or outside of a building or something. And you want to be able to see it from across the room or across the street or whatever. You want really big letters. Okay? That's why it's important that your theme is quick, short, and simple. Right? My theme wasn't we should send people to Mars really soon. That would be way too long. 
It's Mars or bust. Boom. Done. Right? Click. So that means I have more space to make things big. I could make the word Mars really huge and then or and then bust really huge and just have that fill the entire page, right? So that's the first B, which is big. The second B is bold. We want our letters to be big and bold. Bold is what we're doing by making these uh, box letters or bubble letters. Bold means those lines, instead of being a skinny little line like they are here, it's a big box. It's a big thick line, right? You can think of those boxes as really thick lines because you're going to color them in, right? Which leads me to the third B. Beautiful. Beautiful. That means, like, don't just leave it as box letter. Decorate it in some way. Color it in. Make it pop. Make it stand out. Now, there's lots of ways to do that. I could color my letters red. I could color my letters black on a white page. I could color them white on a black page. There's all sorts of ways you can make those letters pop out. You're going to have to decide how to make them beautiful. So let's see that. Let me, let me flip over here and let me just put, on, put my theme onto this page. So like I said, I want my word to be huge, Mars or bust. That's my theme. Notice that I'm making huge box letters. And you do need to consider um, how much space you have. Like if you make your letters too big, it's, they won't fit, right? You, you gotta make it sized appropriately that they will fit on the page that you have. And so there's the first word, Mars or bust. Exclamation point. Mars or bust. Okay, I am done writing out my words, but they are only big and bold. They are not yet beautiful. So I need to do that. I need to make them beautiful. My thought with this is if I'm going to have a picture of Mars, there's going to be like black outer space. Maybe I'm going to do like a Mars surface, right? So there's going to be like, like a Mars landscape down at the bottom. So this is going to be the red planet and then this is going to be space. So if it's going to be space up here, then I want to leave the word Mars white on a black background. That'll make it really, really pop. Um, then these words, it's going to be a reddish background because it's going to be Mars in the background behind. And so for these words, I don't know, do I want them to be white with a red background or do I want them to be black with a red background? I'm going to figure that out. But I do know that I don't want anything overlapping in front of my words. And I know that I've got my words where I want them. So I am going to go ahead and trace them with a Sharpie. And like I was mentioning before, a letter like O or like A that has a hole in it, um, those are going to be where you can see through the hole. So through the hole in the A, we're going to see the black of space. Through the hole in the O, we're going to see the Mars red planet. And the same with the letter B. This a capital B has two holes in it. A lowercase b would just have one hole. But that right there is a hole, and this right here is a hole, and those two holes are going to show the red planet behind them underneath the letter. Now for now, I have decided that these letters up here are going to stay white and have a black background. These ones down here at the bottom, I haven't decided yet. I don't know. So I'm going to leave those alone, and I can make them more beautiful later if I need to color them later. Now I need to consider my imagery. Remember, it needs to be compelling imagery. It needs to be something that people will look at and say, ah, yeah, yeah, I want to do that. Or yeah, I want to be part of that. Or yeah, I want to be there. I want to do that. I want to be with those people. I want to be part of that team. You don't want it to be something ugly, horrible, terrible, no good, very bad that people are like, yeah, I don't care. So for my compelling imagery, I've got an astronaut here planting a flag. I'll add more detail to this in a bit, like stars and stripes and you know, things like that. 
But I also thought, hey, maybe it'd be cool to have some aliens. So I've got some aliens watching this astronaut plant the flag. I thought that kind of made it a little more fun and interesting and exciting. Now it's time to finish off with, you know, tracing and coloring and making sure the whole picture is completely ready to display. Now a step that I like to take is after I've traced everything with a Sharpie, I like to get out an eraser and erase any pencil lines that I have. Like look at my S here, like I didn't trace exactly on my line there, did I? So I like to go back and just clean things up just to make sure everything looks nice and tidy before I start adding color. While I do that, I also wanted to quickly mention that I did use my Sharpie for the uh, sort of faceplate of the astronaut's helmet, and I, uh, I don't want to use the Sharpie to color the black of space. I've got this huge area that's gonna be black. I do not want to try to color that whole thing black with my Sharpie. My Sharpie will dry out way before I finish uh, coloring that in. So instead, I'm gonna find something else black. I could use like a black Crayola marker. I don't wanna use a black colored pencil because that would be a you know, tiny little tip. It's gonna take forever to color that. I might use paint. Um, there's a lot of different choices, but whatever I use, I wanna be careful when I paint, uh, color or paint or add filling the sky black, the, the outer space black. I wanna be careful to make sure that I do that in a way that's not gonna bleed over and, and cover over any of the illustration here that I've drawn. And uh, I also wanna do it in a way that's not going to ruin my materials or take forever. So we'll see, let's see, what should I do about that? So I ended up here using what's called an ink wash. I took some just black ink and I mixed it in a little cup here with a little bit of water so that it wasn't pure black because I wanted there to be some contrast between the black of the spaceman's helmet against the black of space. Uh, so I, I mixed it with some water to kind of gray it down, thin it out so my outer space is kind of grayish. There are a couple areas, these dark black areas are where it's still wet. I'm gonna let that dry while I go clean these brushes and then I'm gonna come back and add color to Mars and my aliens and the flag. So there is my Mars or bust finished poster. Do you have to make Mars or bust? No. Remember, you come up with your own theme. You need three things. You need a theme. Number two, you need that theme to be big, bold, and beautiful. Big, bold, and beautiful. Easy to read, even from all the way across the room. And number three, you need compelling imagery, some kind of image that actually would be interesting and make people, and keep it simple. Like notice I didn't try to draw 600 astronauts and a rocket ship and a bunch of aliens and a bunch of rocks on the ground and, and, and. I kept it super, super simple. Hey, that kind of makes me want to go to Mars. Well, that's it for today. In this lesson, we talked about propaganda and how art can be used to convince people to do something that supports a community goal or a community effort. In next week's lesson, we're gonna talk about a similar style of using art to convince people to do something, but it's gonna be less about the community and more about the individual. Next week, we're gonna talk about advertising. Can't wait to see you then.